This video is about transcription in prokaryotes, an overview. So in order for the bacteria to grow and survive, bacteria should produce several enzymes which would help them in their metabolic demand and also reproducing and growing in number. So the process by which they can produce enzyme is called the central dogma which involves from production of RNA from DNA and production of protein from the transcribed RNA. So the important step, the important first step is converting the messages inside the DNA into a genetic blueprint which is RNA. And this step is known as transcription. Now transcription in prokaryotes could be uh, seen in three different phases. And the first phase is initiation, second phase is elongation, and the third phase is termination. So we would go about one by one and look at the details, the, what are the events in each of these phases. Let's begin with initiation. So in initiation, the key players are definitely the DNA that need to be transcribed, the RNA polymerase and the sigma factor. So the RNA polymerase and the sigma factor forms the RNA polymerase holoenzyme and definitely the nucleotide triphosphate which would be used to synthesize nascent mRNA. So just before the transcription start site the nomenclature is used as minus uh, to denote the upstream region and the plus to denote the downstream region. At 10 base pair upstream and 35 base pair upstream, there are some well conserved consensus sequence to which the prokaryotic polymerase can bind. And this binding and finding this promoter is aided by the sigma factor. So the sigma factor really helps in binding of these um, RNA polymerase to the desired promoter region. Now the sequences in this minus 10 base pair and minus 35 base pair are well conserved. And these are known as consensus sequences. Now after that it has been seen that without the sigma factor the polymerase can hardly detect the promoter and even if it detect the promoter and start to transcribe the gene it would be aborted after transcribing few nucleotides of the mrna so without the pro without the sigma factor the fidelity of the transcription fa transcription is hampered and at the same time promoter recognition is harder the most common sigma factor in the bacteria is known as sigma 70. So with the sigma factor attached, the RNA polymerase can properly understand which site to be recognized as a promoter and it can form the RNA. Now the most common sigma factor is sigma 70 which bind to minus 35 base pair TTGACA region and minus 10 TATA region. Other sigma factors in E. coli involve sigma 32 or sigma 28 for heat shock genes etc. Now the second step is elongation. Now for elongation step for the simplicity purpose this RNA polymerase would be denoted as a bubble. Now RNA polymerase is a big enzyme have, having beta dash beta, alpha, alpha 2, omega and sigma subunit. Sigma subunit is part of the holoenzyme complex. The active zone is comprising beta and beta dash sub subunits. So in case of elongation, this RNA polymerase introduces positive supercoiling at the front of it and leaves the negative supercoiled DNA at the back. And inside that, inside these enzyme, NTPs enter that would help to form the newly synthesized RNA in a template dependent manner. 
the strand which is used as a template is known as template strand the opposite strand is known as coding strand now the newly synthesized rna has a sequence totally similar to their coding strand just a difference is the rna has uracil whereas the coding strand has thymine so the sequence in the coding strand is just similar to the mrna sequence and the RNA sequence is complementary to the template strand. Now the RNA polymerase move in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction and synthesizing the mRNA. And RNA polymerase, the fidelity and the processivity in the RNA polymerase is lesser than a DNA polymerase because you can clearly imagine if the DNA polymerase makes an error then th that error could be detrimental because replication only happens once but for a transcription a gene could be transcribed by a rna polymerase several times so one transcript if it is faulty it might give rise to a faulty protein but that might not be so important in the long run so that's why that's why the fidelity of the transcription process or the accuracy of the transcription process is way lower than the replication and the rate of transcription is roughly 40 nucleotide per second. Now, if we zoom into the structural details of the RNA polymerase in bacteria, and all about these structural details are well known due to the extra crystallographic structure, we would clearly see in the beta and beta dash subunit, there is the entry site of the untranscribed DNA that enters and the helicase activity creates the strand uh, separates the strand and in a magnesium dependent manner the polymerization happens now for polymerization to occur the specific catalysis is known as metal ion catalysis here the magnesium forms magnesium is actually used to stabilize the triphosphate that is getting ent ent entered as ntps from the NTP entry site. Now the template, the the newly synthesized strand, which is complementary to the template strand, attacks the phosphate linkage using a nucleophilic attack, and as a result, the new template strand is the, the complementary strand to the template strand. That means the newly synthesized mRNA is elongated. Now, definitely. There are some antibody. There are some uh, antibiotics, such as rifampicin, which blocks this process by binding to a, a site adjacent to the active site and works like a steric factor of entry to the, of the substrate DNA inside it. So that is how the activity of these enzymes could be blocked by several antibiotics as well. Now, then we come to the overview of termination in bacteria. The termination of the transcription depends upon a termination sequence which is present at the end of this uh, the, the transcript now there are two modes of termination one is rho dependent termination so rho is a helicase which can literally move across the rna and free the rna from the hold of the rna polymerase and the whole complex dissociates and the synthesized rna is now free from the dna and the second type of termination is known as rho independent termination where it has a palindromic sequence which forms a hairpin loop and it prevents the rna polymerase to move further forward and also there is a poly u site poly u stretch and in poly u stretch the adenine and uracil bonds are relatively weak so such that it could be easily broken and the mrna could fall out of the DNA. So that was all about overview of the prokaryotic transcript. In other videos, I would be talking about eukaryotic transcription and regulation of prokaryotic transcription. Stay tuned and if you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.